that's what the creationists do about the facts. Uh, first thing they'll do, they'll say it's just microevolution. Now, I teach evolution. All right, I never talk about macroevolution because, in fact, micro macroevolution are one and the same thing. Give enough time, you can turn anything into anything. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. All right. I had proof. I mean, it's proven. You have the fossil record. It shows all the steps. All right, so what typically what the creationists do, they'll deny the existence of tens of thousands of transitional fossils. Go, look, go to a museum, look at the fossils yourself. They're there. First of all, fossils don't prove evolution, okay? The fossil record is consistent with a story, a historical pattern. I have proof, I mean, it's proven. You have the fossil record. It shows all the steps. Fossils don't prove evolution. And that's exactly what paleontologists work at. The fact that it's losing its legs and turning into a whale is not really, that's still an example for evolution. Yeah, okay, go ahead. You can't go backwards. You can't evolution. go backwards? You can't go backwards, because there's no backwards. There's no backwards for evolution. Right. Okay. There's no forward. There's no forward, there's no backward. Does everything stay the same? change? You're a creationist, man. <laughs> We have a very good set of bones saved from fossil records showing that the whales evolved through a long period of time from animals that were on land to animals that are in the water. We have that evidence. And for, to say we don't have it or to say that we're lying is disingenuous to this audience. I don't know if I can help if you can't get this, but no fossil no fossils count as evidence for evolution. Well, first place, there's not enough to tell what it is. Secondly, you don't know that that is the ancestor of anybody. You don't know that that animal had any kids that lived. It is absolutely impossible to use any fossils at all as evidence for evolution. And anybody that's telling you fossils are evidence for evolution, you talk about voodoo science, that is it, folks, okay? We know these bones produce something other than their kind. Even though no animal today can do this, these bones are able to do it. That's absolute voodoo science. That's a good word. For, i got to use that one for now, and I appreciate that, okay? <laughs> And if those bones don't have dates on them, they don't come with a little tag saying this one evolved into this one. All you do is put your preconceived evolutionary imagination idea on top of these fossils that are found. Fossils don't mean anything as far as evolution is concerned. We don't need them. We got all the evidence we need to prove evolution without fossils. Forget fossils. They just aren't important. What's important is Time, DNA. <laughs> We have a very good set of bones saved from fossil records showing that the whales evolved through a long period of time from animals that were on land to animals that are in the water. Fossils don't mean anything as far as evolution is concerned. We don't need them. And for to say that we're lying is disingenuous to this audience. And evolution regardless of what Dr. Hovind says, is very much a part of that tradition. We are constantly revising. Tradition? You don't have to trust tradition. I mean, what the, I mean come on, there's tradi different traditions all over the world. But we can trust science because science should be the same all over the world. So you start from very simple life and eventually you get everything that we have around us, from elephants to alligators to chimpanzees and, and everything in between. According to Chen, the fossils he's discovered turned Darwin's tree of life upside down. Darwin's tree uh, reversed the condition very unexpectedly. Our research convincing uh, major phyla starting down below at the beginning of Cambria. Base is white, gradually narrow. So this is almost uh, turned down 
different way. Hi, Dr. Hogan. Hi, I and forgot your name. Now. My name is Michelle Markstein, and Michelle. I'm a postdoctoral fellow here in the Integrative Biology Department. I have a PhD in genetics. Here's an interesting fact. If you take and look at what's inside those, that banana and those dogs, they're awfully similar. Now, do you believe dogs are related to bananas? Ultimately, yes. Ultimately, yes. Okay. You're saying, as a, as a postdoctoral fellow. fellow, there you go. But you fellow. don't need to say doctor in front of my name. Okay. I'm pretty secure about it. If, if God decided to use the mechanism of evolution to create human beings, you don't need to you say nervous. that that was the path to do it. Okay. You know why I'm nervous? nervous? Because okay. I don't have the rhetorical skills that you do. No, no. I am winning this argument because I'm right. No, I'm not. <laughs> Does that prove common ancestor, or could that prove common designer? Uh, that's where you're wrong. Um, I think it proves, it does not prove conclusively. It supports the view of common ancestry. Why doesn't it support the view of common designer? Well, why would it support the view of a common designer? Well, why do all motorcycles made by Suzuki, Honda, and everybody else have two wheels, and all cars have four wheels? It's a, it's a common design. Machinery works. is a horrible example. This has nothing to do with... With, with living things. They, okay, but my point explain is, to me what this has to do with the common designer because I really don't get it. I, I'm sure you don't get it, but I'm going to try to help you. The similarity between a Honda Prelude and a Honda Accord are pretty, pretty striking. Yes, they're from the same maker, Honda. You got the point. Oh. You got the point. created certain things, but you believe it's possible that, wait, wait, wait. you believe it's possible that humans and apes have similarities because they simply have a common designer. Is that a possibility? That they're not even related, they're just the same guy designed them all. That can be a possibility, yes. What evolution do we have, what can we see, what, do, what examples do we have of evolution regardless of the conditions, fast or slow? Please name your best one. Well, we talk to the fossil record, right? We talk to the obvious existence of extinct and ancient life forms that have all the appearance, unless you believe a very complicated conspiracy theory, they have all the appearance of being millions of years old, right? So the fossil record, the more we fill it in, the more complete it becomes and the more powerful it becomes as evidence for evolution. Fossils don't prove evolution. Fossils don't mean anything as far as evolution is concerned. We don't need them. If people have lower back pain, that would not be proof of an ape-like ancestor, and that would be the opposite of evolution. No, it would not be the opposite of evolution. Yes, it is. I would love to explain why it's not. Okay, where's an example of where we're gaining something new? We're gaining the ability to walk on two legs and thus have two appendages now to hold things. Who taught you that? And why did you believe it? I didn't teach you that. <laughs> no. I gotta come here more often. I gotta come here more often. That's just what I need. Okay. I'll come here as often as you can find somebody to debate me, brother. You can call me I'll come. You all know that evolution argues that we share a common ancestor with the great apes, the chimpanzee, the gorilla, and the orangutan. Well, if that's true, there should be genetic similarities. And in fact, there are. So we have 46, they all have 48. That's very interesting. I would say I believe in a designer, but you know what? I don't believe in a deceptive one. I don't believe in one who would do this to try to fool us. And therefore, I think this is authentic, and it tells us something about our ancestry. Number of chromosomes is an interesting study. It is indeed true that chimps have 48, humans have 46. Tobacco also has 48. Um. <laughs> oh. Amoebas have 50, and they say we came from Namibia, yet they've got more chromosomes than we do. Um, chickens and dogs both have 78, they're identical twins. Um, the fern has the most chromosomes, that's the ultimate goal of all evolution, to become a fern. So um, the similarities, I think, are evidence of a common designer. We haven't absolutely proved it yet. We haven't absolutely proved anything. I, I ask you. Don't believe, don't believe me. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe him. You don't have to trust authorities, even me.
I would encourage you students to open your mind just a little bit and think about possibly, it could be, just like when people were taught the earth was flat and later they found out, oops, that's wrong. And somebody taught, oh, well, big rocks fall faster than little rocks because Aristotle says so. That was taught for 2,000 years and it's wrong. And some of you are being taught in this university that you evolved from a rock 4.6 billion years ago. Well, it's wrong. You were designed by an all-wise, super-intelligent creator who loves you and would like to forgive your sin and take you to heaven, but if you want to go to hell, that's your business, okay? Yeah.